Thank you. So welcome to what uh, I and friends of Nina hope will be more a celebration of her life than a true memorial. Uh, Isabel de Lambertri, I hope, will tell you a bit later about the funeral plans for Nina on October 17th in Paris. This is a chance for those of us who will probably not be able to attend to speak about the person we've known either for a greater or lesser degree. Uh, I would also like this to be about the personal Nina, the private Nina and not the public Nina. I think we all know the public Nina, the, the woman who was born in 1923 in Paris to uh, Armenian emigres from Russian held Caucasus after the Bolshevik Re revolution. She was born on uh, April 11th, 1923. Uh, in 1933, she, her mother and her grandmother moved to New York to be with her mother's brother, Jacques Kailov, the, uh, the historian who gave us the book on the Battle of Sadarabad. They left in 1933, uh, again, because of the rise of a political system that they found abhorrent. Nina received a primary education from the Brearley School, uh, her college degree from Bryn Mawr. At the same time, she was studying piano under, I believe, Gabi Kasatsu and even Nadia Boulanger, about whom she had little good to say, I must add. <laughs> um, she intended to become a concert pianist, but those plans uh, were dashed when she injured her hand, as she explained it to me, as her glove caught on the lock of a door as she slammed the door, and she realized she no longer had the facility to be a pianist. Okay. But she certainly thank you her lifelong. It's working. Is it so great? Her lifelong um, passion for music. She uh, studied Armenian <laughs> Armenian in. Um, <coughs> In, uh, Take this. in Europe and attended Columbia University where she received her degree under the redoubtable <laughs> Elias Bickerman in archeology span and history in 1955. From 1960, I believe till 1965, she was a peripatetic teacher uh, wandering between Smith and Columbia. And in 1965, she was exclusively hired at Columbia. And in 1969, she became the first woman tenured history professor at Columbia. At the same time, growing the department and her base of both Byzantine scholars and Armenian scholars. In 1977, she became the first woman uh, Dean of Graduate Studies at Princeton. Uh, in 1981, I believe, she became the first chairholder of the Avedisian Chair of Armenian uh, History, retaining her position as uh, Professor of History in the History Department. And in 1993, she retired from Columbia, not because she wanted to, but at that time there still was a cap of age 70. I, I somehow believe Nina would have taught into her 90s had that cap not been there. She did not stop scholarship at 1993, as we all know. And many of us who uh, attended her 2013 celebration in Paris for her 90th birthday were astounded by the bibliography her, her friend Bernadette martin Hizard compiled a page after page of articles and books that uh, remain influential. That's all I wanna say about the public Nina. Uh, there have been essays written about her, notably by um, her student, doctoral student, Dick Ronkyumjian, and I myself contributed one to Jane Chance's uh, compendium, uh, Women Medievalists in the Academy. But Nina herself wrote the be all and end all of Nina Garcelain's life with her uh, autobiography, Pro Sua Vita, which I really recommend to you. That's by way of introduction. And before we start the program, um, what I would like to do, if I manage to do this correctly, is to play a five minute video that uh, I took 
in 2013 of comments Nina made after a wonderful symposium arranged by the International Association of Armenian Studies, whose president was Valentina Kavsolari, and by Charles de Lambertry, who's now with us. Uh, and these were Nina's comments. It's in French, but I think even if you cannot make your way through the French, it is such a marvelous um, example of the quintessential Nina. So let me see if I can do this. And leap in and tell me if I'm doing it incorrectly, please. Can you all see it? Yes. Here we go then. Excuse me. Merci, je voulais d'abord et en premier, évidemment, remercier Madame Calzolari et Monsieur de la Bertrie qui ont rendu cette journée possible, qui se sont donné beaucoup de mal pour la rendre possible. Et aussi, euh, si je peux, Madame de la Bertrie qui a rendu tout possible et qui rendra toujours tout possible. Comme vous savez tous, ma vie et la plupart de mon activité se sont déroulées en Amérique par la force des circonstances. Parce que je n'ai pas pu revenir en France, continuer, commencer mes études universitaires du fait des circonstances de la du mauvais coup que j'ai eu de passer mon bac en juin 40, qui n'était pas exactement le moment de rentrer à Paris. J'ai donc continué aux États-Unis. Par la force des Merci. choses, comme je l'ai dit d'ailleurs il y a pas de 20 ans à mes collègues, je l'ai connu bien à dire des États-Unis, je ne peux en dire aucun mal, qui m'a donné, qui m'a accueilli, femme étrangère, et m'a permis de continuer mon travail, ou de l'initier, de le continuer plus tôt. Comme vous avez entendu aujourd'hui par bien de mes amis et collègues, je, ce que j'ai fait surtout et à la suite des conseils inestimables de ma mère spirituelle Thérapie Ternacésienne, c'est d'ouvrir des portes. Euh, non, pas tellement, on a pour vous dire jusqu'à la fin dans le détail, mais justement, comme je dis, d'ouvrir des portes. D'abord, euh, de regarder, comme elle disait, des deux côtés de la frontière, euh, pour voir que l'Arménie, finalement, n'était pas comme la tradition l'avoir longtemps voulu, une espèce d'extension de la civilisation gréco-romaine au-delà des frontières impériales, euh, mais que, il y a d'ailleurs une tradition qui a poussé même un grand savant comme Adams à euh, chercher des parallèles et des modèles aux institutions iraniennes surtout par ce qu'il décrivait lui-même du 4e siècle en Arménie, 4e, 5e siècle, dans la France féodale du 11e, 12e siècle. Bon. Ensuite, de voir, de tâcher de chercher l'évolution de nouveau entre Byzance et la Perse de l'église arménienne, cherchant sa propre doctrine et aussi des problèmes intérieurs dont a parlé M. Martin Rossian. Tout dernièrement, j'ai posé la question, sans chercher à la résoudre, de ce qui a fait vivre pendant des siècles un monde, un peuple, qui pendant la plupart de ces siècles a été une nation sans état. Et pourtant, qui va chercher l'Empire romain dans des manuels Qui va chercher les Arméniens Ils sont là. On ne sait pas pourquoi, et c'est une question d'une importance énorme. Qu'est-ce que c'est donc 
accumulation, est-ce un état, est-ce autre chose Et maintenant, je me permets à la suite de nouveau de ma mère spirituelle si un pire, de revenir boucler la boucle ainsi qu'elle avait quitté l'Amérique après une carrière brillante là-bas pour revenir en France et s'occuper des études arméniennes où j'ai tâché plus ou moins de la suivre. Euh, moi aussi, euh, je suis rassuré par votre présence ici qu'il y a tout de même une petite place pour moi encore dans le Paris où je suis né il y a très longtemps, dans le 15e pas chic de, près du boulevard de Grenelle, presque à l'ombre de la tour Eiffel, ce dont je vous suis très reconnaissante de me donner cette assurance et grand merci. I must say that um, I cannot let that video pass without pointing out that the late great Gabriel Uhojan, professor of Armenian studies at the University of uh, Bologna can be seen clearly in the background. Uh, also in the chat area, I have mounted the link of the YouTube version of that video in case any of you want to copy it and listen to it again. Now, we do have a program which would like to start with two of Nina's uh, doctoral students. Um, one, Archbishop Anusha Vantanyelian, who maintained close contact with Nina throughout her confinement. Uh, prelate of the uh, Eastern Prelacy of the, the Armenian Church of America. And the very Reverend Father Krikor Matsudian, uh, not only uh, of the uh, Order of St. James of Jerusalem, not only was he Nina's student, but also her close colleague for many years. Many of us learn both classical Armenian and Eastern Armenian from him. So may I introduce first Archbishop Danielian, um, Your Grace. Thank you, Dr. Levon, for organizing this uh, memorial event. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to offer a prayer. I'm sure that each and every one has so, let's say, precious recollections. Hanun Hor, Yevokbo, Yevokunsekbo, Amen. O Christ, Son of God, forbearing and compassionate, have mercy through your love as our Creator upon the souls of our departed ones, especially upon the soul of your maiden, Professor Nina Garsoyan. Remember her on the day of your second coming, for we are Lord and Creator of all, Judge of the living and of the dead, and to use befitting glory, dominion, and honor, now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Your Grace. Father Krikor? I'll say the same prayer in Armenian. Dervor mia, dervor mia, dervor mia. Christos vortias tu anuhagal ye parekut. Kata kwarar chagan sirov di hukis hantial zarayit ye vach niaitskot. Ye manavant i hukis nunei garsoyan ach noko. Kishia havur medical stian arkaitian ko arar jani vor mutian kavutian yev togutian mevat. Tasavorial by darazzo, surtus coachago mian, tasun sikuias ter yevararicha menetsun. Tadavur gentaniat yev merenot. Yev kez vaile park ishpanutun yev badiv arjim yev mish yev avidian savidenit. Amen. Thank you, Father Kriegor. Uh, I don't know how many of you realize the history of Nina the last few years, but seven years ago, she suffered a fairly uh, devastating fall. And after the operation uh, to repair her hip, 
she was left virtually immobile uh, and also with declining eyesight. Um, it is really because of the ministration and the arrangements of two people that we will call on three people actually, um, which allowed Nina to stay in the apartment where she had lived uh, since 1933 on the Upper East Side, East 79th Street, until her death 89 years later uh, in that same apartment. May I call upon Wesley Janeway, her friend and the person who ordered uh, everything for the past seven years? Wesley? Uh, Wesley is there. Here I am. Okay, hi, hi, Wesley. I had I had to. It's not my machine. I had to find the mute button. I am sorry. Yeah. Before I say some words about Nina, I want to thank Cheryl and Juanita, who are both on the call. Good. They were her two most faithful aides, and I use that word faithful very carefully. They never ever missed a day of work. They were never other than completely attentive to her. Nina used to say, believe it or not, I have nothing to complain about. <laughs> that was how such good care that they took of her. And I also want to say that the doctors used to say to me, it's not possible. It's not possible for her to be in such good condition and be bedridden. And it was because of their care and because of their professionalism, but also their compassion uh, that we're able to sit here today and know that Nina's last years were as good as they could have been. Thank you, Ms. Shanway. <laughs> now, if I have a few more minutes, I would like to talk a little bit about personal Nina. Nina always was interested in other people. She was interested in what they were working on. She was interested in their personal lives, where they were traveling. She always wanted to know if I'd heard from Isabel and where was she? And also even what they would close. I had to dress up before I went to visit her. No jeans. And her favorite two expressions, negative expressions were, he looked like a rag pickers convention. And if someone had gone to the other extreme, it was, she resembles a Viennese lampshade. <laughs> um, but her particular passion relating to other people was cats. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think anyone on this call knew the famous Tigran. Tigran was Tigran Rex Armenia. And he was an enormous blue Persian that she got while she was still at the Brearley from the Salzberger family. And she had many, many stories about Tigran that usually involved some form of rule breaking. So for example, she was appalled to learn that my husband's cat had traveled to America in the kennel of the France. She said, don't be ridiculous. Everyone knows you can have your cat in the stateroom, just tip the steward. <laughs> and then there was another story about how when she was commuting to Smith, the car broke down and she and her friends had to take the bus. But of course she had Tiggy with her. So they put Tiggy in a laundry bag. And when the bus driver commented that this laundry bag seemed a little active, she <laughs> looked at him straight in the eye and said, it was, it's was dirty clothes. Did he want to look? <laughs> so that was how, how she got through life sometimes. But she loved the idea that cats were beautiful and that they made their own decisions, that they were independent. And she had two other cats, Vishap and Von Hagen, who mostly boarded with her friend Norma, but she was very adamant that they were her cats too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, in fact, I met Nina through um, the cats and it was always a connection that we had. She always would ask after my cats and I had two archangel cats, Gabriel and Raphael. And when they went to the heavy side layer, we had Eleanor and Violet, who were two Egyptian Maos, and she never, ever failed to ask about them. In fact, I would say it was her first question. <laughs> then we heard, how are you? <laughs> so, 
I have to also say that she occasionally made an exception for a dog and that was Joe's dog. Um, she thought his dog was certainly worth at least talking about. And I often came, when I came to visit, that was always a question that she asked Joe. And where do I mute again, Bill? Thank you, Wesley. Uh, at this point, before we get to the de Lambertres, I'd like to invite her neighbor in the Upper East Side, Shahan. Yes. Shahan Atsuni, the, the pianist, well-known pianist, um, who has a, something to say about Nina and also a um, presentation for us, a Bach transcription of a salty organ prelude. Merci, Levon, et euh, amitié à tous. Alors, euh, la euh, Nina a dit mieux que personne le sens de son œuvre, ouvrir les portes. Euh, J'ai eu l'occasion de la rencontrer pour la première fois, il y a maintenant près de 40 ans, euh, lorsqu'elle est venue faire à Paris une conférence euh, où elle nous expliquait euh, son œuvre en préparation qui était euh, la traduction du Bouzandaran. Alors, euh, cet ouvrage qu'on appelait euh, « Faust de Byzance » en français, dont elle nous montrait très bien euh, qu'il est ni Faust ni de Byzance, mais que euh, c'était un ouvrage euh, qu'on appelle donc « Les histoires épiques bon. ». Alors, ce qui est tout à fait remarquable chez euh, Nina, hein, c'est euh, la variété de ses compétences. Hein. Certains de nous, dans les études arméniennes, sont linguistes, c'est mon cas, euh, philologues, c'est ce que j'essaie d'être, D'autres sont historiens, mais Nina avait toutes ses qualités. Et justement, le, cette traduction commentée du Bouzandaran a ceci de remarquable que c'est un ouvrage magistral, non seulement pour la philologie, pour la connaissance de la langue arménienne, mais également pour l'histoire. Et les historiens... Hein, euh, utilise quotidiennement notamment hein, le, la, la liste des, des personnages qu'elle a dressés avec une, une prosopographie d'une richesse extraordinaire. Alors, euh, pour, euh, pour les linguistes français, c'est quelque chose de très important, car euh, c'est euh, notre grand maître à tous, Meillet, qui a plus que tout autre, euh, montrer qu'elle qu a été l'influence du monde iranien sur la langue arménienne. Bien sûr, avant lui, il y a eu Upsman, mais le mérite de Meillet a été d'utiliser pour la connaissance de l'arménien les nouvelles langues iraniennes découvertes, notamment à, à Tourfan, hein, euh, à la fin du 19e siècle, et de les utiliser. C'est à lui, notamment à Meillet, que nous euh, devons de savoir que, non pas l'iranien en général, mais cette forme particulière d'iranien qui est le part, hein, de, bon, euh, du iranien du nord-est d'abord, du nord ensuite, hein, qui a eu une telle influence. Euh, personnellement, bien sûr, je n'ai pas pu connaître Meillet, qui est euh, né dix euh, ans avant ma naissance, qui est mort dix ans avant ma naissance, mais euh, l'élève principal et le successeur de Meillet, euh, Benveniste, j'ai eu l'honneur d'être son élève et d'assister, de, euh, de suivre ses conférences de grammaire comparée et d'études euh, iraniennes à l'école des hautes études, comme Nina d'ailleurs elle-même l'avait fait. 
et le rappelait toujours avec plaisir. Alors, elle nous disait « ouvrir les portes » Et effectivement, et elle l'a rappelé elle-même dans son intervention euh, pour ses 90 ans, hein, euh, considérer le monde arménien non pas seulement en lui-même, ni même avec euh, les, euh, ses relations avec le monde byzantin, mais surtout hein, avec le monde iranien. Hein. Et là, c'est quelque chose euh, d'absolument irremplaçable. Et je crois que c'est cet aspect de son œuvre hein, dont elle peut être le plus fière. Merci. Euh, je continue. Levon. Yeah. Oui, oui. Bon, uh, I will try to speak English uh, if it's possible. But uh, you excuse me because uh, you see with the emotion and it's uh, not so easy to find the world. But uh, I can say that uh, I have the, it's uh, three, it, Charles it was 40 years. For me that was 35 years I knew Nina. And uh, uh, between us, more than those 30 years, more than the 30 years, we had a mutual affection. And I want thank, thanks uh, her for uh, all the friends we have known. We, we were spoken about uh, Open Door and uh, she was, uh, she had a network and we were, it was wonderful to be member of this network. And uh, I can tell and when, when I see all the person who are there, that we are members of the friends family of Nina. And it's very, very important. Uh, some of you have been, uh, came to Paris for the birthday parties who are so important for her. And uh, I didn't know some of you, but I was, uh, I, I, I was discussing with Nina and she was saying uh, some very interesting things from each of us. And uh, it's a, a pleasure now to see you. And uh, uh, I want to, to give, to say uh, some words for the next uh, uh, day, important day we have, that is 17 of October in Paris, Nina arrived um, um, the Cercueil uh, came, arrived just uh, two days before, and I hope to be able to go to the funerarium uh, next week to see her. And uh, we, we are preparing the obsèque, and uh, I can tell you that uh, we have seen Uh, the, the person at the cathedral, I mean in cathedral, and uh, you, maybe some of you know uh, the Archbishop Norvan Zakarian, and uh, he will be there, and uh, he accept to go after to the cemetery with us, and it is very important. And uh, 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 we are waiting for all the friends we can be there but we are sorry that a lot of you for different reasons are not able but i'm sure that you will be uh, thinking at us at that time and uh, it's very important for us at be at uh, 11 on the 11 in the morning in paris i don't know it be very but you will be there in our Uh, I'm sure we are. We will be together, with, just to honor the memory of uh, Nina. And uh, I want to say, Wesley, as uh, speaking, uh, was speaking about the uh, the cats. But I have another anecdote, uh, amusing. Uh, you know that. Uh, since a long time Nina was not able to walk she was staying in the bed or on the on the armchair just in front of a desk and on the desk there were a machine a very 
very sophisticated machine who uh, that she used just to to read because she need she had a, a lot of trouble with her eyes and uh, she reads books and uh, they, they, were, they were just behind the machine and uh, she she was asking me just to buy new, new books and uh, just and uh, i want to to be uh, to to say that uh, she, uh, last the, the last years she was able to have a new curiosity for all the things that was not armenian studies or uh, but she was speaking of other things and it was very very important just to to do things to uh, intellectual things that was not i don't know if she was able to to understand all what she was reading because you see with a machine she it was difficult uh, just to to pass and to see uh, letters after letters and to understand but she was when i we were discussing on the books i i have seen that she were able uh, to she was interesting by them and uh, that's uh, a lesson for us because uh, i don't know if we will be able at uh, 99 to be uh, so curious thank you thank, thank you, you. Um, thank you. I should tell you that it, both Isabel and Charles were indispensable in arranging things about Nina's apartment and her leave taking uh, from Paris. It would not, both the three of them, um, Isabel, Charles, and Wesley, I would say made Nina's life bearable the past seven years. So from all of us, thank you very much. Uh, and now, Shahan, where are you? I'm here. Okay, I cannot see you. Well, can, and can anyone see Shahan's um, art What screening? am I supposed to do? Uh, well, I think, Shahan, what you should do is <laughs> introduce yourself. There you go. Introduce yourself and... Um, I mean, can you hear me? Yes. Can you see me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Shahan Arzuni. Uh I lived one block away from Nina. Uh, years ago, we used to see each other in the street and engage in conversations. She was very generous and she recommended uh, me to various dictionaries, encyclopedias, in which I wrote about Armenian music, especially Khaz. What I'm going to play in her honor to celebrate her life is a work by Johann Sebastian. Bach, and it is transcribed for solo piano by Alexander Solotti.
Thank you, Shahan. I, Nina would have loved that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, um, those of us who have known Nina for many decades, um, invariably in private conversation, heard about her college roommate and her godchild, and I have never met um, this person who almost seemed mythical to me. And so I am delighted that Su Wang is with us today um, and have us meet you and also to hear from you about the Nina that you knew. So, Sue. I'm so glad to be able to meet you because I've heard names, so many of your names also. And I was so lucky to be, to be Aunt Nina's goddaughter. Um, it's the Chinese traditional custom for, to call people of older generation an aunt or an uncle. She and my mother met in the early 1940s when Ben Moore paired them as roommates in the French, French house. Apparently the college couldn't figure out how to match either one of them. So they put them together. As Aunt Nina says, two odds make an even. And despite <laughs> some of their differences in, in tidiness and geographically different origins, they had in common attitudes and experiences as refugees from areas that had um, at, at one point, they were on Nantucket having a vacation and a local person saw them and thought that they were a Japanese and German spy. Nina used to refer to my family and herself as we Orientals. <laughs> Although she knew me from birth, which is almost 80 years, my first memories of her were in 1956 when she returned to New York to finish her dissertation at Columbia. She shaped my middle and high school education, starting by urging my parents to send me to her alma mater Brearley. And she introduced my family to Valentina Pavlovna and Gordon Wasson, with whom I lived for five years during the school week. She was also my first piano teacher. So every week I saw her mother and Babushka and Tigranus Magnus during weekly lessons at their home on 79th Street. It was full of Nina's paintings and elegant furniture. And Aunt Nina also taught me to appreciate tasteful fashion with her custom-made Parisian clothes. I'm forever grateful to her for insisting that my parents provide instruction to me in Chinese, as this has connected me with my relatives and our past. And she was always interested in Chinese. Even during her last months, one of her favorite topics of conversation was the language and preservation of any family's native language through the generations. She was very concerned that my grandson should continue bilingual education in French, which is his mother's natal tongue. To the end, she was a teacher and guardian of history for all of us. Yes. Absolutely. Sue, so thank you so much. Thank you. I think we were all lucky to know this person. And from you, her goddaughter, uh, we go to uh, Arsen Sapatov, Arsen, who, her relative, her nephew, who is at the moment in Dubai. I hope he's still with us from Dubai. Arsen? I am, I am indeed. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Levon, first of all, to organize uh, this very nice memorial ceremony. And it's uh, very good to see many of you uh, again. And actually, Sue, I heard about you many, many, Nina, but I never had a chance to meet you. I guess many of you, many of us uh, did so. Uh, so what I wanna do is uh, I want to kind of focus on uh, the aspect of Nina's life, which is related to the Soviet Union, because this is how I came to know her. Uh, and I knew her for almost, uh, for my entire life, actually. Uh, my first recollections of Nina would be when I was maybe eight, nine years old, uh, living in the Soviet Union. And we had this aunt uh, who came from abroad and I was not allowed to say back in school that I have an aunt who is visiting from abroad. So I was told, well, when you go to school, if people ask you, like, you have a relative visiting, you say, well, 
we have an aunt who came from Moscow, which was technically true because Nina always flew from Moscow. So she wasn't from America or France, but she was from Moscow. And since she spoke perfect Russian, uh, that was a very plausible information. Uh, so this was uh, my first very early memories of her. And at uh, the beginning, it was very uh, rare that she would drop by because first of all, she was not able to come every year. And uh, she had been staying in, in a hotel. She was uh, not allowed to stay outside the hotel. So there were very few hours after work in Martin Adaran that she, that she would visit us uh, and spend evenings with us before having to return to the hotel before 11 p.m. Uh, and several years later, suddenly, uh, Aunt Nina arrived at our place and the whole week she was staying with us. And that was like marvelous because we could actually have way more stories from her. And uh, the reason for that was uh, there was a mix up uh, with uh, different KGB agencies in Moscow and in Armenia. Uh, so she basically arrived to Armenia one week earlier than she was supposed to. And as a result, she was not able to check in the hotel and the local Armenian KGB guys basically said, well, do you have any relatives to stay with? She said, yes. Well, stay with relatives for one week and then you come back in, in uh, you know, when, when your due time is, uh, is due. So this is how we got uh, Nina to stay with us for the entire week. Uh, also, what is interesting, uh, whenever Nina would come, that would serve as a big family gathering because our relatives from Belisi and relatives from Baku uh, would travel to Yerevan to pay uh, the visit to see Nina. Uh, so that was always a very, very uh, big event. Uh, actually, uh, her appearance in Armenia would be uh, a family gathering event. Uh, the other thing that I'm uh, beginning to realize actually now is uh, when, when, uh, when Nina was in Armenia, she would always travel to see ancient monasteries and churches. And if there was a space, I would travel with her, with somebody else's car, a relative's friend's car. My dad would travel with us as well. Uh, and in those years, it seemed like it was just, you know, the interesting activity for a young boy. Uh, but reflecting back on it, uh, I'm beginning to realize that this uh, basically made me choose my career path. And I'm basically following in uh, Nina's footsteps. And I hope I will be worthy of, of, of her legacy in, in that, in that uh, career path. Uh, so thank you, Levon, for organizing this again, and it was uh, good to see uh, Nina footage and uh, a lot of people I know. Thank you. Uh, I think Nina would be very proud of the fact of your most recent article on the toponyms and the Karabakh controversy. So uh, she did have a po very positive influence on you. And now we turn to another one of Nina's doctoral students. Uh, Sylvie Marion, uh, who's now at the Pierpont Morgan. Uh, and since she was in New York, especially during these pandemic years where many of us could not visit, Sylvie did visit Nina quite often and kept touch. So Sylvie, would, let's turn it over to you. Sylvie. Unmute, please. There we go. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Levon, and thank you again for organizing this tribute. And also, it's really nice to see the faces of people she's talked about for years. Nina Garsoyan meant a lot to me and to so many of her students. I'm not going to talk about her scholarship because we all know about her amazing expertise and her mind. And there's probably nobody or very few who can compare with her in that respect. But as a person, she was so important to all of us and she truly changed our lives. And I thought I would just relate a few stories and nice memories I have of her. Now, many of you probably know that I work at the Morgan Library and Museum, formerly called the Pierpont Morgan Library. And you likely know that the library had an important exhibition in 1994, Treasures in Heaven, Armenian Illuminated Manuscripts. But 
you probably don't know that there's a connection with the Morgan Library, Sirar Pidar Nersesyan, and yes, our Nina Garsoyan, dating from way back in the 1930s. The Morgan has a number of important Armenian manuscripts uh, that were described and cataloged by Sirar Pidar Nersesyan. And in the 1930s and 40s, there was no one else capable of such work in the US, and the Morgan certainly didn't have anyone on staff with that kind of expertise. But Belle de Costa Green, the amazing first director of the library, was friends with Sirat Bider Nersesyan. I don't know how they met, but because of this friendship, she knew exactly who to turn to. Later, Belle Green hired Professor Der Nersesyan to give a 15-week course on Armenian manuscripts held at the Morgan Library in the fall of 1936 to spring 1937. This was the first course given on the subject of Armenian art in the United States and the first anywhere to be given in English. The Pierpont Morgan Library, Columbia University and New York University cooperated in organizing the course. Students from these universities were able to take it for class credit, although the lectures were open to the public. Now, after I started working at the Morgan, Nina related to me that she, at age 13, and her mother had actually attended all those lectures. This was her first meeting with Sirat Pidar Nersesyan, who was my, one of my other heroes, and Nina Garcelayan. Of course, at age 13, she could never have imagined that they would connect decades later and become friends and colleagues. I should also say that the reason I came to New York City to go to graduate school was on the advice of Professor Derna Sessian, whom I had met in Paris in 1979, and who suggested that to continue my studies, I should contact Nina Garsoyan and Thomas Matthews, my other heroes. Now, when I first met Nina Garsoyan, I was kind of terrified. I never told her that, though, but I quickly got over it. And of course, she was my teacher. My Rapuna Beduhi, which means my chief teacher or chief master with an uhi at the end to make it feminine. And she was later my friend. She gave me this wonderful necklace. I remember um, after, necklace. after I told her that I was writing an article about the evil eye in Armenian manuscripts, and I'm wearing it in her memory. My good friend, Ina Baglianz McCabe, also her student, and I had a 25 year tradition of spending Christmas dinner with her, mm -hmm. which meant so much to the three of us. And by Christmas, of course, I mean January 6th, Armenian Christmas, not December 25th, which she never failed to remind us was considered to be heathen Christmas by her grandmother. Mm -hmm. Although I don't think she ever stated it, I'm sure she felt the same way. These wonderful dinners continued until COVID put a stop to them. I miss her. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvie. Uh, at, at this point, and thank, thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, and I would like to point out before we proceed to individual comments to Isabel and to everyone um, about Nina, and the funeral services. Um, I was quite touched when Sylvie and Archbishop Tanyelian told me that they had managed to uh, go to the funeral home in New York before Nina was flown to Paris for a service, um, an Armenian service, which really made me feel e extremely comforted. So thank you, uh, Your Grace. Uh, I'd like to now solicit anyone who would like to share a brief comment or recollection or reminiscence about Nina, but I'd like to start off briefly uh, to tell her what kind of a friend, but also advisor she was. Thanks to Morton Smith and Nina Garcia and my two academic idols. Uh, I received a one-year IREX Junior Fellowship to study in Armenia, or actually do research in Armenia in 1972. My last co conversation with Nina was not about research plans, how many, what I should do at the Matanadaran, what I should read. No, this was Nina's last comment to me. 
only a fool would spend all his or her time researching and studying on such an occasion. Go out and have fun, learn about the country, and make friends. And two, remember you can leave. They can't do nothing to put the citizens of Armenia in danger. I will always remember those two bits of advice from this marvelous um, friend, no, no longer with us. Now, I am not thoroughly uh, Zoom savvy. So uh, I don't know whether I should just open the chat box and let you tell me who has, oh, I see Ron Suni is raising his hand. If you want to raise your hand, we will do that. If you have a brief reminiscence or two about Nina. So let me start by calling on Ron Suni, who was already a graduate student and I think almost complete having completed his doctorate when I joined uh, Nina in 1968. So Ron, please. Thank you, Levon. And thank you for organizing this wonderful occasion. Nina Garsoyan was my teacher, my true mentor, later a colleague, a wise advisor, an inspiration, and I would say an instigator. I met Nina the first day of class in the fall of 1962 when she first came to Colombia. My uncle, Mesrop Kezdekian, a stage director who wanted to brush up on his rusty native Western Armenian, and a more advanced graduate student, Tikran Kuyumjan, and I gathered in a very formal classroom for our first lesson in Armenian, which turned out to be modern Eastern Armenian. Nina paced the front of the room as if she were about to address a class of hundreds. Already she looked like and was a formal and formidable figure. Now Dikran knew some Armenian quite a bit. Mesro could from youth understand quite a bit. But when she asked me what I knew, I said, let's start with the alphabet. She looked at me and said this famous phrase which she used over and over again, in point of fact, that would be a good place to start. I always remember in point of fact. That was fine. And we, she began to explain the finer points of Armenian orthography. And she was the only person I ever knew who found humor in the fact that there was no future tense in medieval Armenian, but they used the subjunctive because nothing was absolutely certain without the will or willfulness of God. Her native languages were not Armenian, but Russian and French, and her Italian was formidable, better than her spoken Armenian. Since my Russian was more advanced than Armenian, she and I found a common language in Russian or in English. I'd spent the next two years studying with her. And when she ran out of Eastern Armenian grammar to teach me, she decided I, a modern historian, had to learn Krapar because uh, you just have to know that to be a serious scholar. I had no interest in learning classical Armenian, but I had to because I love Nina. By the end of the course, I could conjugate any verb perfectly in all tenses. I could decline any noun or adjective in all cases, but I could not say pass the salt. I could read Armenian, in fact, Eastern Armenian. Thank God it was Soviet Armenian, and therefore, I could do research that I was interested in. At the time, same time, Dikran and I, Mesrop soon dropped out and went about directing theatrical plays all through the country, continued as her only two students in a four semester history of the Armenians from early archaeology to the late Middle Ages. As I remember, we got as far as the 15th century and she stopped. For Nina, the rest were current events. She knew that my interests were in the 20th century and she always humored me. Your people, she would say, meaning the Bolsheviks. Yet here was where the real mentoring took place. Nina diligently read and critiqued my 200 page master's thesis on title, Stepan Shaomyan and the Bolshevik Movement in Transcaucasia, 1878 to 1917, unquote. She immersed herself, she actually drowned herself in my people. And by doing so, 
she taught me how to do history. Why, she would tell me, do you have all these stripes? Why are you telling me about every demonstration? What's this mean? What are you trying to explain? Facts for Nina by themselves were meaningless, simply information. Those facts had to tell you something. Nina's historical writing was never antiquarian. It was what I would call high level social science. It began always with an important question and then went on to search for answers. Her work was balanced, objective, anti-nationalist, and always iconoclastic. It was deeply critical of existing historiographies or unexamined orthodoxies. She was against easy, cliched, comfortable answers to difficult questions. Therefore, Nina's history, like all good history, made people uncomfortable. It was subversive. It provoked controversy among true believers in an unvarnished history of the Armenians. Later, she would ask me if I would give lectures, five lectures at Columbia on the modern history of Armenia, as if now she would take seriously something that she in fact knew little about. That was a great effort and a wonderful gesture and came just after Armina and I, my wife, lost our first child, our son, Grigor. She insisted that I do this work. She insisted that I would find my way again after losing this two-year-old boy precisely by investigating that history. In searching for the truth, in writing against the grain, in her commitment to genuine scholarship, wherever it would take you, Nina's work was, in my opinion, the highest possible patriotic contrib contribution that any of us could make to the Armenian people. Thank you, Levon, for this Thank opportunity you. to tell Thank that story. You. Thank you, Ron. Very, very well said. And now I see that I have raised hands and it's making my job very easy. So I will go across the top and introduce Sergio Laporta. Sergio. Thank you, Levin. Um, as many of you know, I never had the chance to formally study under Professor Garsoyan, but I'll never forget the first time I met her, which was at my first AIA uh, conference under Van Leneuve. And as a young person who had just finished their thesis, I was sitting at a table at breakfast by myself because I did not know anyone there. She saw me there and the first thing she said is, why are you sitting there by yourself? And brought me to the table where she was sitting and proceeded to invite me, uh, to introduce me to everyone who was there. At every subsequent meal, she did the same thing. And I had the honor and privilege of sitting next to her at every single meal during that conference. I'll always be grateful to her for that. And for the many years when I would go to New York and be able to speak with her and learn so much, not just about her life and, and historiography, but about the meaning of life from her. So I'll always be grateful. And I thank you, Professor Gosanya. And thank you, Levon, for putting this together. Thank you, Sergio. And now we turn to yet another graduate student, uh, doctoral student of Nina's, a one that came after me. Uh, who's now at Tuft University, Nina Bakhtiant McKay. Nina? Uh, unmute, please. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Levon. Thank you for organizing this. Um, Nina will always stay with me. I hear her in my head. I actually do. And um, her advice, her opinion, was extremely important to me. But before I speak about some uh, one of my greatest memories with her, I want to say that I really admired her courage. Whenever I called her during these seven years, she would never complain. I would say, bonjour Nina, comment ça va? And she would say, et vous, moi je vais très bien. Le médecin a dit que je n'ai rien. The doctor said, I don't really have anything. I'm very well, thank you. And she would never complain about not reading, not hearing, not walking, not once did she ever complain. She was an infinitely courageous, really amazing. I only have one memory to share. 
It's when I got an Armenian chair in 1998, Nina gave me her cap and gown. And she said to me, this was a shared cap and gown. It was mine, but I shared it with Edward Allworth because he was very tall and I am very wide. So I don't know how we'll fit you. You might have to shorten it a little bit. But for me, it had infinite meaning to wear that cap at commencement. It was like a tie with my mentor. I will miss her, but she is with me and she'll always be with me. I have a great dad. Thank you, Nina. Thank you very much. And now I can hear her say for a change as we turn to another doctoral student, uh, this time not an Arminist. Uh, and I have, I think she would take great delight in having you here, Joe. So may I introduce Dr. Joe Portanova? Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Great. I, uh, I, I think I, I owe the title of doctor to Dr. Garsoyan's uh, tutelage and patronage in the, what she would uh, say my use of the term now is reprehensible, but she navigated me through the Byzantine uh, politics of Columbia University and always looked out for the interest of me and her students. Uh, but what I remember most about her is her uh, dedication to interdisciplinarity, uh, always looking at the evidence from whatever uh, corner uh, was possible. And if I learned anything from her in my uh, too few years of study with her, uh, it was to uh, look at all angles of each problem. But I remember most her kindness and her sense of humor. Uh, I'll tell a couple of anecdotes. Uh, one was sitting in a Byzantine history seminar. One of her students uh, appeared to be a little under the weather. And uh, Dr. Fersoyan said, are you feeling all right? And she said, I have a hangover. And Dr. Garsoyan said, well, I've never had a hangover. And the student said, oh, come on. And Garsoyan said, um, it's not for any virtue of mine. She says, I just inherited from my ancestors an incredibly thick skull. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the other one I remember is she was uh, discussing the Battle of Marathon at one point. And she said that um, every year when she would study abroad in Athens uh, and they would have a, a group of scholars, they would want to go to the battle site of Marathon. She said, I was very tired of going to the battle site of Marathon every time. So the last time people came in to ask me, she said, they said, would you like to come? We're going to the site of the battle of, uh, I'm sorry, of, of Marathon. And, and she said, uh, she said, I looked at them with all seriousness. I put my head down and I said, I'm sorry, but my ancestors were fighting on the other side. <laughs> I'll always remember that story of hers. Uh, and I'm very grateful. I owe my position as my minimal position as a scholar uh, to her tutelage, and I feel privileged to have known her. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I, I must segue onto that story that my first Easter feast, which she always did for her students, um, was spent surrounded by Father Krikor Maksudian, who preceded me, and by Dr. Uh, Jack Vartugian, plying me with shot after shot of vodka, which led to Nina being quite amused at my state as I left her apartment on East 79th Street. So my head was not quite as thick then. Uh, I'd like to turn to a friend and colleague of hers from Paris, a face I have not seen since 2014, uh, Claire Muradian. Claire? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Levon, uh, for organizing this. Um, I was not a student uh, of Nina, I, although I think I met her when I was still a student in the late 70s or early 80s. I think I was uh, visiting New York and uh, um, I knew Ina, and I think I, I went with Ina at uh, Columbia and we uh, had a, well, we met, uh, I met uh, Nina at that occasion, but I knew 
her better later on in the uh, late uh, 80s and early 90s when she came uh, uh, to Paris uh, each uh, six months and we used to meet and to have uh, lunch or dinner and met a lot. And what I want to share, well, we talk, we were talking also about history, although I'm modern history, and so I, we, I was not uh, as erudite and didn't uh, work on the same field. But although, nevertheless, I learned a lot also from her methodology and the way she uh, illuminated that. But I want just to recall some uh, personal memories from her, what she was talking when she was talking about her youth and some with a lot of humor. Uh, for instance, when uh, uh, she talked about uh, her, um, uh, Van Cleef being in love with her, but I said, she said, oh, he was so stupid and I couldn't, I said, but why, wh why didn't you ask him for a, a diamond or whatever? <laughs> so, or when she met, um, at when she was a student, um, the house where she was living uh, was um, governed by um, um, uh, fam family, fam a woman from the family of uh, Han Girey, and she was the only one who knew was who, he wa who she was. And uh, she told me that her son also was in love uh, with her, but she said, oh, he was so stupid. So each time <laughs> this is story, well, these very funny stories where, um, where well, she told them with a lot of humor and very often vitriolic uh, uh, comments. And uh, what I, I was admiring also were her, uh, her um, fabulous uh, tastes uh, that she expressed in, uh, for instance, in the furniture, the way she furnished her houses, her home in New York or in Paris, the, the eye she had, uh, and um, although she didn't carry on being a historian of art but never, or a, a, a pianist, but nevertheless, this uh, artistic, uh, uh, very thorough uh, taste, very well, wonderful taste was uh, very uh, amazing, and uh, uh, she was she loved being uh, surrounded by beautiful uh, objects, and uh, uh, this this was also very uh, uh, interesting. And uh, about about uh, history, what I remember also, what all the uh, when there was the quarrel about uh, um, and uh, Ron Ron told about the controversies and very. Uh, very ugly sometimes uh, controversies that happen against her and some other historians uh, in Soviet or post-Soviet, early post-Soviet Armenia, for instance, about the, the date of uh, Armenians' uh, adoption of Christianity. And uh, she also be don't forget it's uh, uh, 314. And if you ever uh, write as they do 301, I will excommunicate you also. So it was very interesting to have this, uh, this conversation. And although I was not a specialist of that area, that made me uh, um, also think a lot about this whole uh, cliche history and uh, for things like what I, I thought was uh, very well established, but that was not at all. And reflect a little also about uh, Armenia, even for my period, Armenia not being only at a crossroad of empires, but also on two sides or three sides of, uh, of uh, a border. And that was very uh, meaningful. So I was not a, a student, but in a way, I tried to well, learn from uh, uh, the way she uh, conceived the uh, uh, Armenian history and the way she conceived the history, uh, basically, and to uh, confront uh, various um, various aspects and to, Sorry for my uh, uh, dreadful English, but uh, I wanted to share uh, this with you. And although I'm very sorry, I, we couldn't met a lot and we couldn't speak a lot these last years because it was sometimes uh, complicated. And um, well. Since the time she didn't came to Paris, I, I myself couldn't go either to uh, to New York and met her, although she always uh, invited me. And I would like also to um, uh, to um, well share also the, um, well talk also about the memory of her good friend in Paris who died uh, three years ago, Elisabeth Boudourian, who was very close to her and and uh, also uh, uh, who was well. This is very um, three years ago, and they both were uh, very fond uh, 
one of each other. And I would like also to remember uh, this uh, best friend of her in Paris. Thank you, Claire. Um, at this time, because I, I have heard that some people might need to leave, I would like to turn to um, Haiku Tejan, who will uh, sing uh, uh, two uh, Armenian hymns, and then we will come back to those of you who would like to leave additional comments. Uh, Haik? Haik? Good evening. Haik, uh, uh, yes, I, I I'm introduce extremely you to. I'm grateful uh, to Levon, not only for this very great honor of making a very small contribution, but also I owe Levon the opportunity of getting to know Nina, albeit a little as recently as January 2019, when I had the pleasure of paying her visits. It was meant to be one visit, but one was so enchanted by her personality, by her smile, as well as by the stories she had about various musicians and others. Uh, we haven't heard very much about her musical career, but uh, she was very accomplished indeed. and. Uh, in terms of musical pedigree, it was first rate. She studied composition as well as piano. And uh, she, in fact, pointed out that she uh, had regular contacts with the composer Poulenc and with the singer Bernac. And she said, in fact, one of them was seated uh, uh, in the very chair uh, where you are sitting now. So it, it, it was really a, a wonderful uh, privilege. Uh, I have chosen to sing two things, which I shall sing one after another. As we are getting ready to celebrate uh, 850 years from the birth of the great Armenian saint and hymnographer and ecumenist, St. Nerses the Gracious, I shall sing a little excerpt from a hymn of his called Aisoranjar from the stanza Daradial Tserkant uh, Tserok. Uh, which has the very significant words that may be a source of comfort to us as we recollect uh, Nina. Gyankant mahu pochargelov, in other words, exchanging death uh, for life. And I should like to follow that with something that has perhaps an Iranian uh, connection, again, uh, relevant to our memories of Nina. Uh, it's not a hymn, but it has become almost like a hymn, a very well-loved song, uh, 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 a very well-loved poem composed by uh, Father Revont Alishan of uh, the uh, Venice congregation uh, uh, of San Lazaro, where uh, the poet, as he hears the nightingale singing, associates the nightingale with the historian Yerichet, and it seems to him that the nightingale, as it seeks the rose, he sees in the rose the spirit of Vartan, who died in battle. There is an Armenian pun because Vart is a rose, and Vartan and Vart are very similar. The melody will not be one of the well-known ones uh, by Yekmalyan or Alem Shah, but rather one which I was taught by my teacher, Father uh, Mesrob uh, Kerkezian, who learned it from his mother, so it has associations with the Musadar Armenian villages. So I shall do that very briefly, if I may.
Thank you, Hyde John. I think Nina would have loved that. We have uh, five more, and I think we'll have to end with those five um, since we are getting close to an hour and a half. Uh, and I will take those five in the order I see them on the screen. Uh, Elizabeth Brown? I would like to say simply that I met Nina uh, for the last time, thanks to Sylvie Marion which was a wonderful occasion. I had known her since I arrived in New York in 1963 through the Columbia seminars. We quickly discovered similar ways of approaching problems. Uh, her incisive, intelligent comments were always inspiring. And then we discovered a mutual love and admiration for one of her very close friends, uh, Jared Caspery. Jerry and she knew each other through Smith, and they were both dedicated to the, the work. They lived their ideas. They could tease histories out of the smallest word and phrase, and I learned so much from both of them. I particularly wanted to mention Jerry, who died in 2008, because of his special love of Augustine. And I wonder whether Nina's love and admiration and desire to read the texts of Augustine at the end of her life came from the conversations that she had had long before with Jerry. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. And Lola Kundacha. Hi, everyone. Levon, thank you also for organizing this. And I want to also give a special shout out to Sylvie, who introduced me to Columbia. I was attending a lecture while being an undergraduate, and she inspired me, uh, opened my curiosity towards Armenian studies, which is a subject that my mother had studied, but I never thought I would follow on her footsteps. When I came to Columbia after my graduate, to, uh, after my graduating from Hunter College, I was working on campus at the computer science department, and I went to meet Nina Garcian, who, seeing that I had certain skills, invited me to study with her. I was a night student. I got to meet many of you. I got a chance to go to conferences and meet more of you. So I'm very grateful to her for opening my life to something that was not perhaps otherwise in in the um, you know a future that I didn't expect to have. Let's put it that way. So thank you for organizing this. It's great to see everybody. Thank you, Lola. And we turn to the Byzantine world again uh, with Dr. Jane Bishop, uh, another of Nina's students. I must mention at this point when Nina and I were discussing this, I believe she produced 14 PhDs and countless masters during her careers. Jane? Well, uh, um, I am astonished to reflect that it's 50 years ago that I arrived at Columbia and uh, got to see her, but uh, she influenced my life even before that because she taught John Alexander, who while he was getting his degree in Eastern European studies uh, from her, uh, he uh, taught as a sabbatical replacement at Vassar, got me excited about Byzantine history. And then I arrived at the source. I am sorry that I don't have more extensive uh, personal reflections about her like uh, so many people, but uh, when I was reminded of her compassion in the first semester of my uh, graduate 
career. My father had terminal cancer and died toward the end of the semester. And she did indeed go out of her way to ask me about it and express her sorrow. And uh, I cherish the memory of the few occasions after I got my doctorate when uh, uh, Joe and Constantine and I uh, went to see her and heard funny stories, but mainly uh, it's uh, her effect on my life and career. Uh, they, uh, it was kind of unheard of to have six Byzantine uh, candidates for a doctorate at the same time as we did when I was there, including Joe and Constantine. And uh, I, I cherish the tiny distinction of being the first person to get an official Byzantine history PhD at Columbia. Uh, and uh, because of uh, Professor Garcoyan got to uh, Um, I have a feeling you're, Jane, I think your computer has, I think Jane has left. Eventually get a tenure track job and a uh, rotation of our lease. Uh, oh, uh, am I, uh, oh dear. Well, uh, but uh, the military cadets at the Citadel love teen history. Uh, and of course, I my career, I found that you didn't have students were of the uh, hatchet job of Gibbon, so uh, you could just teach it to uh, I don't quite know what to do. <laughs> well, I Nothing uh, to her except to enthusiastically and years have said wonderfulness quoted her. Uh, what? Uh, you are breaking up, Jane, I'm afraid. Oh, how terrible. I'm so sorry. Okay. If, if you shut your video uh, but keep your audio, it could be that, that you'll have enough. Um, let's see. Um, bandwidth, yeah. Thank you, Sue. Uh-huh. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Huh. Okay. Um, right. So anyway, uh, I didn't know uh, Professor Garcoyan personally enough, but uh, she uh, taught me, well, she, she basically uh, made the direction of my working life and the career I had so much fun at, and I quoted her epigrams through all my courses. Uh, I remember how she uh, pointed out that A.A. Vasiliev died on the 500th anniversary of the taking of Constantinople. I've been trying to think of what this is the thousandth anniversary of, and it's just the nice reign of John II. So I hope that things uh, quiet down, but I had to in our terrible times, but I just had to say how uh, wonderful she was in my life. Thank you, Jane. And we turn to yet another Byzantinist, um, Constantine Hachidimitru, who, who I have not seen in decades. And yes. Constantine. Uh, thank you, Levon, for uh, organizing this. Uh, uh, and um, I'm very grateful to be included. Um, I could say uh, many anecdotes like Joe and uh, Jane uh, will recall, but um, I, I want to emphasize one uh, aspect of Nina uh, that uh, is uh, the most important to me. Um, there's, it, it's uh, uh, no small measure through her kindness and support that I was able to get through uh, the doctoral program at Columbia. Without her, I would probably not have uh, completed it. So filled with emotion, I went to see her uh, some point after um, I defended and uh, completed the program to thank her. And uh, Nina turned to me and she said, Constantine, 
Uh, there's no um, reason for you to thank me. Uh, what I want, the best thanks that you can um, give me is to pass it on, help someone else. Uh, and Nina, I want you to know that I've done my best to pass it on and to help others. And I will for the rest of my life. That's Nina Garsoyan for me, Lebo. Thank you so much, Constantine, and true. And we will end this with another one of her graduate students, one of the newbies, I think. Um, oh, yes, uh, Patricia Constantinian. Pat. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you, Levon, for putting this together. And it's just so, so nice to see so many of my friends here who I haven't seen in person for a long time, but really we should get together for sure, right? Um, so, yeah, I was one of the, I was one of the, the, the latter, the latter day saints, if you would, but um, Nina, you know, Dr. Garsoyan, Professor Garsoyan, she never became Nina for me because I never received a PhD from her. So I continue to refer to her as Professor Garsoyan. Um, you know, she didn't want to create clones. She wasn't interested in producing copies of herself. And so, you know, some of us didn't end up in Armenian studies. Some of us went on to other fields. For example, I am now working as a clinical psychologist, but I feel like what I learned from her carried with me in everything I did. And one thing that I will remember, and anyone who worked as her research assistant, as I did for many years, will remember the circular file. Hmm. Um, so, you know, she held court in Kent 500 every Tuesday. And every Tuesday, you know, she, I, I would arrive at sometime at around 8.30, a.m. And she would be very busy going through her mail. And inevitably, there would be some monograph that arrived on her, you know, on that big table, a big, heavy conference table. And so she would open the she would open the package and she would immediately go to the back of the volume. She would go to the sources. And looking through the sources, it would be a very quick decision on whether or not this volume was going to end up on one of the shelves or if it was gonna meet its demise in the circular file. And so this is something that has always traveled with me in, in my other studies. And we, 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 she taught us how to read, she taught us how to write, she taught us how to judge our sources. And so even now, you know, I, I find myself picking up a study of something and I immediately I go to the back because the great lady taught me how to read. And so this is what I wanted to share that, you know, her, her, her wonderful sense of humor, her, her, she, her caring, her, her fabulous cooking. I mean, those of us who've had the pleasure of enjoying her cooking and I know Sylvie. <laughs> um, and that's it. And also just the, yeah, I'll miss her. That's all. Thanks, Levon. Thank you. And I think you speak for all of us to tell you the truth. To this day, um, it's over a month since her death. Um, when something I've read uh, that I would normally have picked up the phone and you shared with speak, her, my I can no longer share it with her. But um, she is there. She is in all of us. Uh, the fact that all of you joined us today, this is not me organizing this, this is everyone organizing. Teo, did you want to say a last word? Teo, unmute. You've muted your microphone. Yes, uh, Tom Matthews would like to say something. Oh, right. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I, I really am an outsider. Uh, being a uh, Byzantinist and, of course, not Armenian. Uh, 
uh, uh, but uh, I want to testify to the all inclusiveness of Nina's uh, approach to uh, Armenian studies, that she wanted to see me incorporated into her program at Columbia and where I uh, studied with uh, Pekor Maksudian, uh, who introduced me to the alphabet. <laughs> Uh, and I, I can't say I've gotten very far in my Armenian studies, but uh, I think I've defined uh, a, an especially Armenian approach to the exegesis of the gospel. And uh, I, I'm, I, I'm anxious to hear uh of armenian studies that are continuing this kind of uh uh relay this kind of study of the close relationship of art to uh, biblical exegesis uh, uh, i'm so pleased to be seeing so many of my old friends here uh, to be uh, to see especially uh, uh, Serapi, uh, especially Sylvie Marian uh, and uh, Helen Evans uh, who collaborated with me in uh, the study of the Ar Armenian manuscripts at the Pierpont Morgan Library. Thank you, Tom. It's good, to, it's good to see you as well. And it's good to see everyone else. Thank you. You've been very patient as we have had a chance to remember our mentor, our teacher, our friend, our family member, our beloved Nina. Um, I, could, I can hear her chuckling from above. Um, saying I am not a saint, um, but <laughs> we remember this extraordinary person who left an indelible mark on each and every one of us, who has guided us through our lives, who has been very kind, uh, has been very, how shall I say it, in loco parentis to so many of us. Um, Nina, may you rest in peace. May all of you keep her forever in your hearts. And as Constantine reminded us, pass along whatever she has taught us, scholarly, personal, whatever, to future generations. Um, I cannot be there on October 17th, Isabel, my dear. But yes, my heart will be with you. My heart will be whoever is at the funeral of our friend. So thank you. Good morning to you on the um, still on the West Coast and good night to you in Europe and in Dubai. And my heartfelt thanks for all of you joining us. Thank you very much, Levon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we um, thank you, Levon. Stop the recording.